For years now, Google have acted like Windows is the subsystem that runs the Google Chrome web browser. They don't publish any apps for Windows at all, really, which is a shame because most of their users use Windows. Thankfully, the push towards PWAs or progressive web apps means that apps like YouTube, Google Maps, and Google News can now be had on Windows 10 outside of the browser window and outside of Chrome. There is no PWA yet though for Google Drive, Docs, or Gmail. But in good news for Windows users, Google have finally acknowledged that some people prefer to have access to their files and photos directly on their desktop, just like files that are stored locally on your device. That's right, Google. Some people work outside of your browser. Shocker. Anyway, the good news is that they have published an app on Windows, the new Google Drive for desktop. It replaces Google's outdated and poor backup and sync tool that has long been outclassed by its competitors. Both Dropbox and OneDrive have had smart file sync for years now. Smart sync or file streaming as Google call it, allows you to use your file explorer to see and access files that are stored in the cloud. Files are downloaded and stored on your PC when you need them, rather than having them always stored on your device or having to mark them specifically for download. So when you have one, two, or five terabytes of cloud storage, you don't need to have a computer with a massive hard drive to keep them in sync, which is smart when you think about it. You can mark files to be available when you know you need them, but generally these systems do a pretty good job of tracking the files that you need based on what you're working on, and they automatically download them in case you need them. Oddly, once you've installed it, the new Google Drive shows up as a drive letter under this PC in Windows. I think that's a bit of a slap in the face. It's like Google think that using files is so 1999 that we need a drive letter to figure out how files work. Perhaps they should have called it the A drive for all of us over 40 who use floppy disks. But I guess they had to do this since the product is actually called G drive and it shows up in Windows as a literal G drive. For what it's worth, Dropbox and OneDrive just show up in the directory tree under their names, not as a drive letter. Anyway, because Google's solution relies on drivers to make that G drive happen, it doesn't work on ARM-based Windows 10 computers like my Surface Pro X at this stage. Perhaps Google could fix that by publishing a driver for ARM-based Windows computers? I think that would be pretty simple, but let's not hope for too much, eh? Unbelievably, clicking on a Google Doc or a sheet in the G drive opens the file in your default browser, even if it's not Chrome. Well done, Google. And you can store non-Google files in there, of course. If you put a Word doc into your G drive, it'll open in Word, and it will even prompt you to share the file with others via G drive. Although they promised to enable this in the feature list, I didn't have any success with real-time editing on a Word document in Word on the desktop directly. Now that is something that works pretty seamlessly with OneDrive, but with G drive, I had to open the Word doc using Google Docs in the browser to make that work with an Office file. The new Google app also comes with some Outlook add-ins that I didn't really want. I can see why they would be handy, but downloader beware, you'll have to go and switch off these Outlook add-ins if you don't want them, since there's no way to opt out of installing them. Add-ins can be a real pain point in Office since they make everything load slower, and if the developer hasn't done a great job in creating them, they can easily play up and lead your app to crash. So I think it's really best to avoid them and switch them off if you don't need them. There are a couple of settings for the sync client that can be accessed by clicking on the Google icon down here in the Windows system tray. For example, you may want to consider whether or not to run this app at startup. If you're on a battery based device like a Surface Pro, and if Chrome is anything to go by, this won't do wonders for your battery life, there is no setting to pause sync if you're on battery saver mode. There's also no setting to pause downloads on a metered internet connection. So beware if you're planning to use G Drive on a mobile broadband connection where data is usually more expensive. Personally, I'll continue to use OneDrive to store files because of the great apps on all platforms, including Windows, on ARM, plus the one terabyte of storage that I get with my Office 365 personal account, and the five terabytes I get with my OneDrive for business account. Also, the fact that OneDrive enables automatic saving, version control, and real-time co-authoring via the desktop app or the browser is a key advantage, not to mention the battery and 4G-friendly settings options. I also use Dropbox quite a bit for personal projects, but it is handy to have this sync client to use with customers and friends who are all in on Google. So thank you, Google. Let's hope we see more of this Google that meets customers where they are rather than the Apple style, they'll do what we tell them to. Anyway, if you found this video helpful and you can see past my snarky demeanor, 
then hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.